In today's video, I'm gonna answer this question. Hey there, dirty teeth, winter's coming and I'm thinking about indoor training. Can you please walk me through your smart trainer setup and your best tips would be great too. Thanks. Well, this is the main part of it. I brought it out here just for fun, but it normally lives in my bedroom. It's nothing fancy, but it keeps me fit and motivated. And compared to many indoor training setups out there, it's pretty cost efficient as well. So without further ado, here's what I've got going on for indoor training with some tips and hacks I've learned along the way. And yes, I'll put the appropriate links in the video description. First off, I don't have a dedicated room or a man cave or anything like that. So if you're limited on space, don't let that deter you. Like I said, my smart trainer is normally plopped in my bedroom and I'm lucky enough to have it parked next to big windows. They let in plenty of sunlight, which is really nice, and I can also open them for some extra ventilation. I know this isn't possible for everyone, but if you have access to a window or natural light, I vote use it. The bike sits right in front of my desk and computer where I also happen to edit all my YouTube videos. When it's time to ride, I simply spin the monitor around so I can entertain myself and stave off the monotonous boredom. I've usually got something lined up on Netflix to watch or I'll dig into my watch later playlist on YouTube. I can handle deeper content that requires more brain power during longer zone two efforts and I opt for more mindless shows or videos that I don't need to concentrate on as much for harder interval workouts. I put the keyboard and mouse on the windowsill which also acts as my desk while riding and I'm good to go. I also line up my water bottles and nutrition here as well as the remote control for my fan and my wireless noise canceling earbuds. Don't worry, I'll detail those in a minute. Again, I'm just using the space I was dealt with. When I travel for work, I found that ironing boards are a solid substitute for my windowsill desk. Of course, there are specific trainer desks out there if you prefer, but I suggest just taking a look around your house and I'm sure you'll find something creative that you can work with. In fact, I'm sure some of you have done some pretty ingenious things, so share them in the comments. For more efficiency and to keep my area tidy, I've added some adhesive hooks to the wall below the windowsill. I hang a few microfiber sweat towels on them. Both the towels and the hooks are very cost effective and I procured them from Amazon, links below. Oh yeah, I also have a specific hook for my heart rate strap where I hang it between workouts. A place for everything and everything in its place. Behind my trainer, I have some plastic bins that organize miscellaneous GAC. They share duty with some of my bikepacking stuff, but they also come in handy for the trainer. I keep a few spare sweat towels in there, as well as some chain lube for the trainer bike, and a pack of wet wipes that I use to clean off the bike and my windowsill area. You'd be surprised how quickly everything gets really gross if you don't stay on top of it. Some people use a fancy sweat guard or sweat cover on their trainer bikes, but I just lay down some painter's tape on the top tube. It protects the paint from sweat, it's easy to peel off, and doesn't damage anything. It's also a heck of a lot cheaper than those weird sweat bras that just kind of freak me out anyway. On top of the plastic bins, I have a small fan that I point towards my lower back and a jar full of random snacks and nutrition. It's usually filled with bars and gels and chews and fruit snacks and depending on the length and intensity of the ride I have planned, I'll just grab a variety of treats to keep on the windowsill for easy access. I used to keep a trash can close by where I'd throw my bar and gel wrappers in. I don't do that anymore because I don't want it to lead to a mouse problem and it is in my bedroom after all, so I take the food waste to my kitchen trash. Depending on your situation, a trash can is a nice thing to have close by, but remember, if critters are a concern, get one with a lid. Underneath everything, I've got a cheapy Amazon yoga mat. It keeps my carpet clean and it works just as well as an expensive trainer mat. It's also easy to roll up and take with me when I travel for work. I use two fans, the small one behind me that I already mentioned, and then a primary fan up front. I keep this one angled off to the side a little bit so all of the wind directly hits me instead of getting caught in the front of my bike. Again, you can buy a specific trainer fan, but a high velocity fan for job sites like the one I have is a much cheaper option. This one is made by Lasco and I'd highly recommend it. First off, it's very quiet, especially for how powerful it is. It has three speeds, although I've never needed anything more than the lowest setting. It's also small and portable, and it's easy to pivot up and down so you can aim it right where you need it. And guess what? 
If you need to paint your bathroom or shampoo your carpets, it'll speed up the drying time for that too. To pimp it out even more, I bought a cheap wireless remote switch on Amazon so I can turn it off and on while I'm riding on the trainer. Very nice. My trainer is a Wahoo Kicker Core. It's a basic wheel-off smart trainer that does everything I need it to do at a reasonable price point. I believe it retails for $4.99 these days, but you might be able to find deals online, especially around the holidays. I bought this one a year ago during Black Friday sales, so keep your eyes peeled. Anyway, according to Strava, I've put almost 6,000 miles on it, and I've never had one glitch. It has a traditional splined freehub shell on it, and I popped on a SRAM 12-speed NX cassette that works with my mountain bike. Yes, the $1,000 or $1,500 trainers have a few more bells and whistles and offer some movement, and they're maybe 1% more accurate for power data, but for most of us average Joes and Joannas, I don't think you need to buy into the hype. I know road bikes are probably most common for trainer duty, but I've installed my Niner full suspension bike. It's super duper comfy and I'm primarily a mountain biker, so it just feels right. I keep a Garmin out front mount on the handlebars and attached to that, I have a simple little iPhone or tablet holder from Amazon. It clicks in and out of the Garmin quarter turn mount and I plop my phone on it during workouts. As I said, I just watch TV, movies, or YouTube videos while I'm training. I'm not as wifty, or at least not yet. A friend of mine's been bugging me to do it, and I might give it a try one of these days. But I do use Trainer Road for structured workouts, so I like displaying all that info on my phone right in front of me while I watch whatever on the computer screen. Also, if an important text pops up, or I need to answer a call or send a quick email, it's easy access. I have a set of wireless noise canceling JBL earbuds that work great as well. I think they're about 50 bucks and they've been a solid investment. They last a very long time between charges and they do a great job of canceling out most of the drivetrain and fan noise so I can focus on my chosen entertainment. It's easy to switch between the noise canceling mode and an ambient aware mode if my wife walks in and needs to chat with me. I can also play and pause the video I'm watching by tapping the earbud and I don't need to reach down and hit my keyboard. About five months ago, I pulled off the front wheel on my bike and I splurged for the Wahoo Kicker Climb. This is not at all mandatory or necessary for an indoor training setup, but boy do I dig it. My preferred types of mountain bike rides include long, steep climbs, followed by epic, endless descents. If you're with me, raise your hand. And I have a lot of that type of terrain where I live. So when I'm indoors, I like to be able to mix it up and throw some steep climbs into the mix. The Kicker Climb is designed to integrate with Zwift and it'll go up and down automatically with the terrain, which seems great. But even without that, I enjoy manually moving it up and down randomly on my own to mimic the steeper terrain. Even if it's just to change my position on the saddle and tax my muscles in different ways, it really helps me get through the training rides. Unfortunately, it's not cheap and it actually costs me more than the trainer itself. The climb retails for $700 and I think I paid $550 for it. Yeah, it's not for everybody, but for me, it's worth every penny. Other than that, on the days I have an indoor session, I just use my bike as a clothing rack and I lay out my riding gear in the morning. When it's time to jump on, everything's ready to go and I have a consistent routine. My shoes go underneath the bike and I dangle everything else off the saddle and handlebars, etc. After the ride, I hang all my clothes and towels on the bike and I keep the fans running for a while so everything dries out before I toss it all in the laundry. One last little purchase I want to share is a baby bottle dryer. I have it hanging in the kitchen and after every ride I wash my bottles and stick them up on the branches to dry. It's got a drip tray and a spot to toss the bottle caps as well. Again, not necessary, but it helps streamline the process. And all of these little things add up to squeezing more saddle time into your busy schedule with less time wasted on the minutia. I hope I answered the question and maybe some of this will help you dial in your setup and get you motivated for some winter indoor riding. If you have any related tips or tricks or hacks for indoor training, do tell. I'd love to hear from you in the comment section. Other than that, thank you for watching. Please like and share and subscribe. And until next time, ride bikes, give back, pay it forward. Thanks so much for squeezing dirty teeth into your busy schedule. Please help us reach more people and ensure you receive new videos by giving this video a like, subscribing to the channel, and clicking the notification bell. Until next time, ride bikes, give back, pay it forward.